Hey everyone, David here from Unqualified Critics, and today I have a real treat of a scooter, the U Scooters GT 2020 model. There is some new stuff here, and this is a improvement or an upgrade from the scooter I previously reviewed, which was the U Scooter Booster Sport. And it's improved in some very specific ways, and we get into all of that. Now, I know many of you who watch the channel watch for arcade content. But if you've ever been curious about these electric scooters, everybody's seen the Bird and Lime scooters. They're kind of all gone now, thankfully, but we've all seen them. If you've ever been curious about owning one of these electric scooters, stay tuned to this because this scooter is really, really interesting. Now, full disclosure and be completely honest with you guys, this scooter was sent to me for free to review. So I want you to know that. But my opinions are my own and I will be honest with you about what I like and I don't like. But honestly, there's a lot to like about this scooter, although there are some key drawbacks. So let's take a look. Let's break down the specs and we shouldn't spend a ton of time on this because any of you can look up the specs yourself. I wanna to talk to you more about my real world experience with the scooter so far, but the specs are important. 25 mile per hour top speed on the Booster GT. That is the same as the Booster V and yet we get more power from the electric motor in the scooter. So it's kind of curious to me. I'll come back to that. The weight is slightly heavier, 26 pounds, but that still categorizes this as a lightweight scooter and it is still very much portable. Although two pounds might not sound like a lot, this felt meaningfully heavier to me just from carrying it around quite a bit as related to the Booster V. A 31 mile range, stated range. I'll talk to you about what I got in the real world at my weight, but I can tell you I have friends that ride these scooters that weigh less than me. Your mileage is absolutely gonna vary based on what you weigh. So I'll give you a couple data points. You get a lithium ion battery from Samsung. You get a 700 watt motor, which is incredible power for a scooter this light. It is rated for a 25 degree slope. I observe similar hill climbing capabilities to the Booster Sport. And overall, I believe this is a very well-rounded portable package I achieved a real world range of 16.8 miles and that was not me range maxing. So that's my disclaimer. Could I have achieved a longer range? Yes, I would have had to go a little bit slower, not do hills and such. I was going full speed almost the whole time. I'd slowing down for stop signs and things where I had to, but basically I'm maxing out as much as possible. And I rode roughly the same route as my range test for the other electric scooters I've reviewed. So if you've watched those videos, this is meant to be an equivalent comparison. This is the best range I've experienced yet, and it is a huge upgrade over the 11 miles I achieved on the GT's little brother, the U Scooters Booster Sport. This is officially long enough for me to commute with, and I'm very excited to finally have a scooter that could be a commuter tool if I wish. And yes, it is actually comfortable riding this for almost 17 miles. Looking at performance, this scooter is very fast and it's extremely quick with improved torque over the U-Scooter Sport. I didn't have a good way to measure acceleration, but this is noticeably getting me up to speed faster than the Sport. If I had to guess and sort of ballpark it, I'd say it's 30 to 40% less time to get up to full speed. Now, surprisingly, the 200 watt power difference this is a 700 watt motor. The Booster Sport I'm referring to is a 500 watt motor, but the Booster I'm reviewing here is the GT. That's the 700 watt motor. I thought I'd get a higher top speed, but I really didn't. 26 miles per hour, give or take, I got close to 27. Um, that's about what I got on the other scooter, and that's what I'm getting here on the GT. There's no noticeable governor either. Even downhill, I could still apply the throttle. And yes, the speed will climb above 26, no problem. But honestly, I, even though I don't understand why it isn't faster, I'm not disappointed at all. At that speed, it starts to become a little unsafe if you hit a rough patch or you hit a bump or something. I know someone that got thrown off an electric scooter that was going that fast. So it's no joke, it can be dangerous. I do encourage you to be safe. By the way, disclaimer, you should be wearing a helmet if you ride this thing, this thing is so fast. So if it went faster, I probably wouldn't go faster. I just don't understand why it's the same speed when it's 200 more watts of power. 
but that wattage difference is noticeable when it comes time to get up to speed. It just gets you there so much quicker. Hill climbs are very good. This is rated for a 25 degree slope. I climbed a very steep hill, which you can see in the video. Yeah, there was slowdown, but that was also extremely steep. That hill is no joke. So the power is there to get you up, you know, whatever road hills you're gonna need to get up. I live inside my own world of make-believe. As far as features go, this thing is loaded just like the other Q-Scooter products. These are all pretty substantial. There's a temperature sensor, which is kind of neat, a detailed high contrast LCD readout, which gives you 10% increments of your battery life. There's regenerative braking, there's a tail light. Of course, you've got a headlight as all these scooters have. Once you fold the scooter down, there is a handle that, that comes uh, strapped to the scooter for improved portability. There's a large comfortable foot deck, which is a major improvement over last year's Booster Sport. There's a drum brake. So you can stop with your hand and you don't have to use your foot for that rear friction brake, although that is there too. A kickstand has been added for the 2020 model. And I think the star of the show, as far as features go, a fantastic front and rear suspension and also airless tires. Now, I, when I recorded the Booster Sport, I lauded the suspension. It felt really good. It felt a little looser. And maybe it's just because this is brand new, but I don't think so. This suspension's a little bit stiffer but it's actually it feels more solid and it's just so comfortable to ride this thing at distance now what don't i like on the feature front of all the three different ways you can apply brakes there's the magnetic brake the rear foot friction brake and the handle drum brake only that magnetic brake is integrated into the tail light the drum brake handle when you pull on that you will stop very fast but you're not going to activate the rear light which i don't understand because any of those brakes that you use will stop the cruise control. So electronically, it's registering a braking signal. It's just not getting it to the rear light. Not a big deal. It just makes it feel like those other braking solutions are sort of tacked on. And speaking of braking solutions, that drum brake handle, at least in my experience, it stops me from folding the handlebars down all the way for max portability. I can fold it down, but the one on the side of the handle will kind of pop back up over time because that cable is stiff and it's sort of wanting it to stretch out. So you do sacrifice portability a little bit on it. It's a little bigger, a little heavier than the Booster Sport, which I'm comparing it to. Much more comfortable, significantly longer range, and much better braking distance. That's what this is gonna come down to. I wanted to do a stop test on this because this was a big complaint on my, the, my review of the last U-Scooter product I reviewed and they did add the drum brake here. So I measure a distance of about 30 feet. You can see from this picture from the time when I hit stop and I only use the handle brake for the drum and the magnetic brake. I did not use the rear friction brake. I could have used all three and stopped quicker, but I don't feel like that's going to be super safe to manage in the real world. And I wanted to give a practical real world application. And I was at full speed, by the way, I was going about 27 miles an hour, slam on the brakes, Within 30 feet, I'm at a dead stop. And it did feel pretty safe. Now, do you wanna do that regularly? No, you don't. You don't wanna hit a bump while you're slamming on a brake and all that. But if you need to come to a stop quickly, I feel that that's pretty quick given the massive speed of 27 miles an hour. All right, so my final thoughts. I'm gonna tell you what I think of this scooter and then I'm gonna tell you who I recommend this scooter to versus who I recommend the uh, less expensive Booster Sport, which I also reviewed because honestly, they are quite similar. So overall, I very much love this scooter. If I had to give it a score, I'm giving it an eight out of 10. I already mentioned the things I don't like, but this is very portable, extremely fast, great acceleration, and great comfort and i'm just surprised that we get that much in a package that is this portable and that's why i can so eagerly recommend this however if you're going to buy this scooter you have to compare it to the U scooters booster sport you're going to save about 150 to 200 bucks if you go with that model so which one should you get the sport hands down is the more portable of the two it's shorter wheelbase it's smaller, it's lighter, it's easier to carry. There's no problem folding down the handles. So if portability is 100% your biggest factor, 
and that 11 mile range if you weigh what i weigh that's what i got on that scooter is sufficient then that's a good choice you're still going to have loads of power and if that range works for you then that's the one to get if you want longer range if you want maximum range and you want 80 percent of the portability that you get with the sport then get the gt it weighs just a little bit more but it's so much more comfortable to ride it feels much more solidly built and i'm going to say it's safer because you do have that drum brake that you can engage at any time with your hand while you're riding the scooter without having to mess around with moving your feet which i think makes a big difference but the build quality there if i didn't say that before that's an improvement here so that's something to keep in mind I'm not saying I think the sport, by the way, is going to fall apart. Just that the GT feels more solid when you ride it, and it feels more premium. All right, so that's all I have for you right now. If you're interested in picking up the GT, please use the link below. And to support the channel, use the code UC60 for 60 bucks off for my viewers. You get free shipping with that, and you get a built-in carrying handle. If you want to do the booster sport, my code there is still valid. I'll drop a link below. You get $100 off that, bring it down to $7.99. And same thing, free shipping, and you get the carrying handle. Let me know what you guys think. If you have questions below, ask them, and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. So if there's anything I did not cover on the scooter, I'll do my best to answer. And for those of you that just want to watch arcade stuff, I'm going to be back to covering arcades in no time. So I'll talk to you all real soon. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who hurt my cars and watch me weep I love that